Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's have some quick uh, gambling type of uh, angles arising from uh, week six of the National Football League, right? This is a bit of a post-mortem. Here's some news gamblers need to research and keep an eye on. The first, I'm going to just have five takeaways from the week. The first is that the Baltimore Ravens are much better than advertised. I don't think the public fully gets it. The Ravens statistically are above average on offense and on defense. Understand they have above average wideouts, right? Torrey Smith and Steve Smith are one of the league's best receiving tandems. Torrey Smith had been asleep at the wheel until this last week. I would encourage you to look at the box score. Understand both of these guys are gamers. Both of these guys have produced throughout their careers in big games, right? Steve Smith, quite frankly, is a Hall of Fame level wide receiver. Understand, too, they have an above average coach with a track record of making it to the playoffs and winning playoff games. His level of success, quite frankly, is much bigger than the public recognition. I think the public is focused on coaches like, let's say, Sean Payton. Understand that John Harbaugh has won as many Super Bowls as Sean Payton. He is an elite coach. You also have a quarterback who has won as many Super Bowls as Peyton Manning and who, quite frankly, has a better record in the playoffs than Peyton Manning. Right? Take a look at Joe Flacco's history of making the playoffs and of winning games in the playoffs. Also, keep in mind, this is a guy who won some very tough games in the playoffs with comebacks. Right? The guy beat Peyton Manning in Denver, right, in the playoffs. Let's remember, too, that this is a guy who beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. I think Joe Flacco is an underreported story. I think he's undervalued, as is the rest of his team. Let's talk about the rushing attack, because that's supposed to be the Achilles heel of the team. But, of course, this last week... That rushing attack gained 169 yards. If you think that's a fluke, understand that that's the fourth time this season in six games that this team has had over 125 rushing yards, right? The Ravens have never been held this season to less than 90 rushing yards in a game, right? So I believe that this team has legs. I believe that many people... When they look at the division, are distracted by the Cincinnati Bengals, who just gave up 37 points. You need to keep an eye on the Baltimore Ravens. Let me point out, too, that the offense is a high-level offense. It's not street ball. This is not Colin Kaepernick ball, right? The quarterback's not running around in the pocket hoping someone breaks free, right? That system doesn't work in the playoffs. What works in the playoffs is this kind of honed timing offense, right? I think Baltimore has legs. I think they're undervalued. Let's talk about another undervalued unit. You know, it's interesting. We look at the Detroit Lions and you think about Matthew Stafford, who actually had a year where he threw for more than 5,000 yards. You think about Calvin Johnson, who set the record for most receiving yards in a season, right? You think about other explosive offensive players, right? Reggie Bush comes to mind. But understand that the heart and soul of that team this year, and it's an underreported story, is the defense. That defense is much better than expected. Put it this way. 
That defense has great numbers right now, and they've already played Aaron Rodgers, Eli Manning, and Cam Newton. Right? Understand Aaron Rodgers scored a whopping seven points against them. Seven. In other words, they haven't been playing, you know, a bunch of rookies. They've played against some veteran quarterbacks. And that defense, under first-year head coach Jim Caldwell, is one of the best in the league. Now, you want to pay close attention to that story. Understand they are now heading into games against offensive juggernaut teams like the New Orleans Saints. But don't sleep on the Lions' defense if the Lions can work out their offensive problems. If heralded rookies like Eric Ebron can actually produce, that team could be dangerous. As it is, they're off to a fast start. Let's talk about another story that's impacting football this year and it's one you need to pay close attention to and it's the major injuries that have hit teams with a realistic chance of making the playoffs. I'm not too worried about bad teams with major injuries, right? If there's a major injury on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm not really focused on that. I'm focused right now on just teams with realistic shots of making the playoffs, and the injuries are staggering, right? Lineman Doug Free is going to miss a few weeks for the Dallas Cowboys. Right now, the Cowboys just played a big game on the road, beating Seattle in Seattle, right? Big news, but understand, the Cowboys are headed to a tough part of their schedule against their divisional foes. Right? Nothing will shake up divisional standings more than head-to-head -head matchups. They play the Giants this week. The week after, they play the Washington Redskins. The week after that, they play a tough team that also looks headed for the playoffs, the Arizona Cardinals. They're going to be without Doug Free. That's a problem, especially given that Tony Romo has had back problems, right? The Cowboys, simply put, can't afford to lose Tony Romo. They can't afford to lose the Marco Murray. They can't afford offensive line problems right now. Understand the New York Giants, who have been hit or miss all year, suffered a huge injury by losing Victor Cruz for the season. Now, maybe Odell Beckham and the other guys will step up but the giant receiving core is a young core. Guys like Ruben Randall, these are young guys. Right? Victor Cruz was the most reliable wide receiver on the Giants. Now on a team that looked like it had offensive line problems against the Philadelphia Eagles, this is a bad development. Eli's already under siege. Another injury that seems to be lingering. Guy has missed some games. Is the injury in Cincinnati to A.J. Green? That's a problem. This guy is an elite receiver. In fact, I would argue gamblers know more about this guy than the public. The guy is that important to the team. Right? In Detroit, you're missing perhaps... In fact, let's get real. He is the best wide receiver in the league and Calvin Johnson when he's on his game. Right? This is a guy who can destroy an opponent. Look at his numbers for the first game against the Giants. Now we're hearing he might be out until week 10. In fact, things are getting so murky that Jim Caldwell felt a need to tell the press that he's not a medical doctor. This sounds like a situation to keep and Ion. Let's just say Golden Tate and uh, Eric Ebron aren't Calvin Johnson. Let's just say that Detroit's offense has had problems. Speaking of problems, in New Orleans, Jimmy Graham's shoulder is an ongoing problem. 
You can't rush the guy back because a shoulder is something that gets tested during a football game. Right? Is there a more important person other than Drew Brees in the New Orleans Saints offense than Jimmy Graham? Is there? Isn't Jimmy Graham a secret sauce that makes the Saints unique? Keep in mind, the Saints, many people, myself, I'm among them, believe that the Saints' schedule is favorable to them. Believe that the Saints' offense is top-notch. Believe that the Saints, quite frankly, while they're defensively challenged, it's something that can be fixed. Right? Their games feature big plays. You get the feeling that that defense, if it can just stop giving up big plays, easier said than done, could actually be an average defense. And if they're average, the team would be above average. Keep an eye on the Jimmy Graham situation. He could miss a few games. Also in Philadelphia, let's get real. Philly has a real chance to do special things this year. But a player who's a big hitter on that team, especially on special teams, right? A guy who's a jack of all trades. He's running pass routes. He's rushing the football. Darren Sproles is hurt. Now, I know the team's on a bye week. I know people are downplaying it. We're hearing Sproles might miss a game or two. Really? With a sprained MCL? When you hear the word sprained MCL, what's more likely? That the guy misses a game or that the guy misses a month. Right? Keep in mind, too, Darren Sproles relies on speed, quickness, cutting. Right? Sproles is a guy who jukes you. How's he going to do that with a sprained MCL? I think he's such an important part of Philly's attack that they aren't going to rush him back. Philly has a shot. To win the division. They need Darren Sproles on the field. Keep an eye on that. Let's talk about another area of interest. Another takeaway. I know it sounds like I'm bashing this team. Look, I'm just trying to warn gamblers. Because this team is hopelessly overrated. And it's going to burn many of you. What I want people to do is to look at the box score. From yesterday's 49er Ram game. Look closely at that box score, keeping in mind that the Rams are a below 500 team with a young quarterback, right? Isn't it time that we call the San Francisco 49er rushing attack overrated? Look at that box score. Look at the number of carries Frank Gore had. Look at the number of yards Frank Gore had. Didn't Frank Gore get stopped yesterday? Now let's talk about the rookie Carlos Hyde. We heard so much about him. Look at his numbers. Aren't they awful? Didn't San Francisco actually get stopped on some key third and fourth downs yesterday? Didn't they have a problem putting the Rams out of their misery? Now let me just say this. I would argue that the rushing attacks the secret sauce to the 49er offense. Right? I don't believe Colin Kaepernick operates well within an NFL passing construct. Right? I think this guy is a guy who does better when the play breaks down. He's moving around the pocket, and then as the defense breaks down, Guys break open. Now that's very different than an Aaron Rodgers where you can have your defense intact. Your defense doesn't have to break down. He's throwing the ball to where his receiver will be. Guys like Jordy Nelson are running next to DBs. Then they break. It's a timing-based offense. That's what works in the playoffs. Then they break. <laughs> Before the DB knows what's going on, the guy has caught the football, right? If the 49er rushing attack can be controlled by the St. Louis Rams, 
then it's my belief that it can be controlled by the teams that make the playoffs. And if they're able to shut down the San Francisco rushing attack, and if the 49ers have to rely on their passing game, which seems to me to be throwing the ball up to receivers like Brandon Lloyd so they can do jump balls with the DB, right? It's either that or you're throwing the ball to guys who are wide open. Right, Kaepernick's not what Greg Cosell calls an anticipation thrower who throws it into coverage based on where the receiver is going to break. Right, think Kurt Warner. Right, so my point to you is simply this. The 49er rushing attack yesterday is a harbinger of what you should expect from that rushing attack in the playoffs. Frank Gore is not getting any younger, folks. Carlos Hyde looks like there are holes in this game to me. We'll find out a lot more about the 49ers this weekend because they're going to some place named Denver to play against some guy named Peyton Manning. Right? I'm guessing the Niners are going to be overhyped in that game. Let's talk about another problem involving a team that has a real shot at the playoffs. Philadelphia, I'm talking about you. The problem right now is reflected in the five picks in the last three games that Nick Foles has thrown. Understand, this is a guy who only threw two picks last year. Nothing kills your chances in the National Football League more than turnovers. Right? You can have the better team. You can be playing the better ball. If you're coughing up the football, as Chicago Beer fans know this season, you're going to lose some games you should win. Nick Foles is coughing up the football, folks. Right? Two multi-interception games in the last three. Seven picks on the year. Seven. Right? Understand, too, it's not like the guy's throwing for 400 yards every week. In fact, the guy hasn't topped 300 passing yards in any of the last three games. Well, I believe in Nick Foles. He's a quarterback on one of my fantasy football teams. But yes, I'm concerned. He's a young guy, and he seems to have taken a step back this year. Pay a close eye on that situation. Understand, too, Mark Sanchez, that's right, that Mark Sanchez, had a great preseason, right? Chip Kelly is a guy who, if problems persist, will make a change, right? Keep in mind, he moved off Vic to get to Nick Foles. Keep, a situa uh, keep an eye on what's happening in Philly because with that rushing attack, right, Philly should be doing better at the quarterback position, right? Nick Foles, who has suffered some big hits, doesn't seem to be the Nick Foles of last year. Let me hear from you. If there are other key stories that we should all be paying close attention to. And I understand Dallas is doing much better than expected. Right? I understand that there are a few teams in this league, Green Bay, their passing attack, that seem to be gelling right now. Tell us about those stories. Tell us about what has caught your attention. Tell us how we can get an edge on the casino. Thanks for stopping by. For premium picks, visit DeWireSportsBetting.com. Thanks.